Yo, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. Yes, we're back. New Patrick CC, how not to respond to allegations. Um, sometimes you, you want to respond back just to clear your name. Um, because like, honestly, sometimes you, I don't want to say the word because we early in, in the video, but you D, D if you do, you D if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Cause if you don't respond to allegations, people think it's true. Then you respond to allegations. People think you are lying. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just gotta, you gotta allow it to, uh, then if you say for instance, if you're doing content, uh, allegations come out about you, you know, you don't respond to it. People flood your comments. Why are you avoiding addressing it? Like what? You know what I'm saying? So it's hard. Everybody's going to tell you what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do until they're in that situation. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And my biggest advice is the best way you can take advice or take advice from the people who have went through the situation, especially the ones who possibly came out on top. Uh, that's the best way you can do it. But hey, everybody got got something to say about somebody else's situation. But let's get it before we get into it. Make sure you check out the links in the description box down below. You already know where to go if you want to first support. All you gotta do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals, like it with a thumbs up. And honestly, y'all commenters, even when like say for instance, a creator responds back to a comment, y'all can't tell a person how they're supposed to take the comment or how they're supposed to respond to the comment. Because it's not you being coming to. So, like, you know, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, if somebody say something and I take it negative, don't tell me, well, you you know, you know you don't have to respond back to it. You want to, like, majority of y'all who be in a comment session and be saying stuff like that, y'all don't understand because y'all don't do. But let's go. Let's check it out. Let's see what's about. I was going to go on home red page, but nah, let's get it. Time and time again, we have seen influencers and celebrities' careers get destroyed after just one controversy. We have also seen celebs totally ignore their crimes or accusations and continue to succeed while the internet argues back and forth. But almost never have we seen someone accelerate their own controversy to the masses and declare their own career as over after being proven innocent of their crimes. Angry Reactions is one of the most famous and beloved TikTokers of all time who decided to abandon his career after TMZ reported that he was arrested for domestic abuse. And even though he has thousands, millions of people proclaiming his innocence, he still feels he has to clear his name. Little did he know, clearing his name would actually just dig him in a deeper, darker hole. Putting the hands on me, I never called the police on her. She's showing bruises of me defending myself from her, and she making the internet think that <laughs> Bro, you know this, bro. You know this, bro. During the height of the pandemic, Wanye Johnson, who goes by the name Angry Reactions on TikTok, exploded in virality after posting this video reacting to a girl making a. Only thing I'll say, and that, and that is, stop pulling out the phone and uh, doing everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I hate this one thing. I hate. What you gonna do, man? You ain't gonna pull up. Like, bro, you talking to the phone. When they be arguing, they be talking to the phone. I'll be like, bro, you doing all this spitting and stuff. And I'm like, like the some a lot of times, bro, when you going through stuff, put the phone away. Yeah, true. Like I will say, when you really are going through. The reason through, why I'm not saying much as far as the situation, I have no clue. You don't have no about uh, the situation. I, I, I have heard really about don't. the situation. Like, I've, so I'm just trying to. It's, like, a, it's been an ongoing hear situation. Hear the information and then like respond. I don't know what's going on. Do you even know who this is? I know his face, uh, but I don't know. His when the last time you when the last time you see him uh, upload? I have no clue because I just randomly come like if some if I'm scrolling, I'll come across something. Like on social media, but... ...actions on TikTok exploded in virality after posting this video reacting to a girl making a cake. 
Can I start off by saying, can y'all like not be mean to me? Like, who be a mean to you? Gonna, or people always who? will say shit like, oh, if you're a creator, if you make content, you have to expect hate. Like, you can't get mad about it, whatever. But like, I'm sensitive, y'all. You tell me my cakes look like shit. Yeah, it's good. Who you said like, your cakes look like shit? Being said, Point them out! Comments. I hope you know that, that cake like looked good! The video amassed more than 40 million views in 24 hours. Viewers loved the dichotomy of him looking extremely aggressive and intimidating, yet screaming words of positivity and support. If I passed you on the street and I don't say a word, I look like the angriest person in the world. But when you actually get to know me, I'm actually a really positive person. At the time of filming his viral video, Onye was actually homeless, living in the car his videos were filmed in after his landlord evicted him. According to Johnson and his ex, Jillian, neighbors complained on countless occasions and allegedly called the cops for overhearing loud shouting matches. Johnson told BuzzFeed News there were never any charges pressed against him, and that he and his ex are on good terms today. Johnson's ex, Jillian, confirmed these accounts. Onye is big, and his voice is bigger than mine, so neighbors could only hear him, Jillian said about why their landlord evicted him. I'm not sure why he decided to tell BuzzFeed that he was involved in domestic disputes while receiving his first major press interview, but it's interesting that his involvement in domestic altercations was a topic of discussion from the very beginning of his career. Despite the setbacks in his life, posting this one video gained him 700,000 followers overnight and over 1 million in less than 24 hours. From there, a trend emerged where artists of all different kinds began making artwork of his angry face, to which he would react to and shower them with compliments. What is that, man? Oh. My gosh. I see it! That's me! How you doing this? How? Explain yourself! This is fantastic! God! That's me! What's going on? A pancake? God! Wanye quickly became people's daily dose of positivity and motivation. He built his entire brand about uplifting people, spreading good news, and providing a necessary break to the endless amount of negativity poisoning social media. This is a tall task for someone living out of their car during the pandemic, but people loved angry reactions. He shot up to 7 million followers in 3 months and eventually would surpass an astonishing 27 million followers, which is in the top 130 accounts across the entire platform. His whole life changed. He was making a full-time income on TikTok, securing huge brand deals with Pizza Hut, Hyundai, Planet Fitness, and inspiring millions of people all around the world. And over the past three years, he has become one of the most overwhelmingly beloved TikTok creators, which is why his fans were shocked to read on February 18th, 2024, Angry Reactions' Wanye Johnson arrested for alleged domestic violence. According to the TMZ report, Wanye Johnson was arrested on the evening of Monday, February 12th in Burbank, California after a woman called from a hotel to report an altercation. Cops say that Johnson and the woman got into a verbal argument that turned physical at one point. We're told the woman did not need medical attention, but Wanye was still booked on a felony domestic violence Damn. charge. He posted $50,000 bail and was released. Now you'd expect this story would be huge news, but really the only major news publication that reported it was the New York Post. Some bigger blogs like Unilad and Complex reported the story, but let's be honest, do TikTok users even pay attention? attention to what major news outlets are reporting. They look to their favorite TikTokers to report drama, crime, and current events. But even those people weren't exactly flooding the algorithm with this story. I only found one TikTok with over 1 million views and based on comments like, why am I seeing this in April, with a whole thread of people replying the same thing, leads me to believe that people found out about his arrest months after the whole thing was over and resolved. Then again, I am aware that many reporters could have deleted their TikToks after the story played out a little more. But it's safe to assume that most people found out about Wanye's arrest when he addressed it directly on his own TikTok. I know y'all been seeing what's going on with me. All the news articles, all the pages posting me, all the comments, all the TikTok videos people making about me destroying my character. I want to start this video off right. I don't think domestic violence is funny in the slightest. I see the comments, right? Oh, angry actions, finally had an angry action. I get it. Some of y'all is kids and some of y'all just trying to be funny, but this is something that's happening in real life for me. It's easy to understand why Wanye felt like the whole world was attacking him, but from a non-biased outsider, most of the people watching his TikTok had no idea about the arrest before he addressed it. His video- Which is you. You, you never heard about the situation. I heard about the situation uh, just because I've seen creators on YouTube covering the- uh, the situation. I I'm not on TikTok. Uh, uh, I hop on there every now and then. Even though we got a TikTok, 
I the few videos we posted, I posted those, and I just was like, let me just see what it. Now I know we probably would be big, real, real big if we posted like you know what I'm saying. But I just was like, and also I'll say this: the one thing I I noticed about social media when social media reporters uh, report on situations like this, they like to hurry up and jump on stuff without knowing the facts. And a lot of times, a lot of people who want to hop on stuff without knowing the facts typically get the story wrong. And when sure. they get the story wrong, a lot of them who do that try to backtrack themselves and, de- like Patrick said, possibly delete it. Or the... have to follow up with a video and explain. For Honestly, more. they might not even follow up with a video. Just they just go delete it and act like they ain't never post nothing. Yeah, true, true, true. So in that regards. That might be the reason why when you, when Patrick d- decides to do the uh, video, mm-hmm. after his further looking into it later, they're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Because with the big creator like this, you're going to get traction by doing a, a coverage. Yeah. Especially d- domestic violence. Let's be real. D- d- uh, DV gets a lot of views when it's a when it's celebrity or a celebrity like. You know what I'm saying? So somebody with, like him with such a huge amount of following... You already know they're gonna try to, you know. Yeah. Even t- I wonder did he search Twitter? Cause Twitter typically uh, has those. Have something. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man. Most of the people watching his TikTok had no idea about the arrest before he addressed it. His video received 786,000 likes and over 7 million views. His side of the story got more views than any other version of the story. But I'm gonna give y'all the detail I feel like y'all need to know. This was a situation of me getting attacked from a woman and defending myself. I was being attacked by a woman and the slightest bit of defense landed me in jail. I don't know why everything happened the way it did. I don't know why it's a felony case, because once the cop showed up, she didn't even want me to go to jail. She was begging them not to take me to jail. I done lost friends. I done lost. Well, let me come in on that real quick. Uh, I do know, uh, unfortunately, know a lot about DV cases. Uh, Seen it, never been involved in it, but I've seen it happen a lot. Anytime there's a DV case, police come to the uh, scene, somebody's going to jail. If you, if she truly didn't want you to go to jail, she, I, I'm, I'm not sure who called the police. Let me just say that. I'm not 100% sure who called the police. But if, if it's a DV case, a DV situation, if you don't want anybody going to jail, do not pick up the phone and call the police. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you pick up the phone, call the police, you're asking for help. Mm-hmm. And the best help in a DV situation is taking one of the parties to jail. Point blank, period. There's no other way to stop a DV situation besides one of them going, unfortunately, going to jail. I don't care how much the uh, one party said, I don't want this person to go to jail. I don't want this person to go to jail. But also, if it, both individuals have markings on them, both parties will go to jail. So, I will still say this. Any woman or man if you're dealing with the DV situation, do call the police. Call authorities. Get help. Because one thing can lead up to another, and they can get worse and worse and worse. Never take a DV, DV situation lightly. Never. Because it's only downhill from there. Like, that is one thing that we see time and time again of repeated cycles and it get worse and worse until, fortunately, the worst can happen. You want to stop before it get there. And sometimes it get ugly. But get yourself out of the situation before it's too late. Mm-hmm. But let go. She didn't even want me to go to jail. She was begging them not to take me to jail. I done lost friends. I done lost endorsements. I done lost sponsors. I done lost a lot of things in these past 24 hours. All off of an accusation. It's also important to understand that the masses did not know who his girlfriend was. Sierra Willman was his girlfriend involved in the case, and she is also the mother of his then six-month-old child. Oh, All child. the positive content I push out into this world, and I, I couldn't even get the benefit of the doubt. 
people immediately crucified me before they even found out what actually happened. And I just find that so crazy. Crucified is an... Let me ask you this, though. I'm going to just ask you this real quick. Yeah. Him going to jail behind DV, right? Mm -hmm. You you are a corporation. You just see that, hey, somebody you're putting money into their pockets is going to jail behind a situation like this. Do you immediately cancel the drop drop them? Without having uh, a lot of times, yeah, that's what's going to happen. PRs, it, press, like without knowing actually what happened, without having details, without getting your side of the story, or actually having the facts of what happened, what occurred, how it all folded. You're, they're going to drop you because at the end of the day, they are covering themselves. It's their business, their name, and having that attached to their their brand, that's a no no. Because I'll say this, like I always say this, uh, if I knew, if I had known uh, at a prior time, I think I would have changed my mind. I said I would have went to school for for my Would'd major, mm -hmm. but my minor would have been marketing. Marketing, mm -hmm. being a, I probably would have a job in, as a marketing exec. Mm -hmm. Marketing exec, I'm dropping you. I don't care. You are it's by you going to jail and putting yourself in a situation for you to go to jail is already bad marketing for my company and my mm -hmm. business. Later on, if we decide to work with you, later on, you you go, go handle that, get your stuff situated. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna let you go nicely, not bad, but I'm gonna let you know, let you go nicely. Yeah. You and yourself can say be mad at the sponsors for letting you go. Yeah. Because at, at the end of the day, you allow yourself to even get in a situation like that. Even though it is your girlfriend, mm -hmm. you already have previously, also, you previously spoke out and said y'all have a lot of domestic issues anyway. Yeah. It was going to get, one of y'all was eventually going to go this route. So, I'm going to go ahead and part ways. Mm -hmm. Not saying we won't ever be able to do business in the future, but I need you to go handle that. And whatever how it comes, whatever way it turns out, it's not me turning my back on you, but it's me protecting my brand. Right. And the brand comes before everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even found out what actually happened, and I just find that so crazy. Crucified is an extreme word here. Most people were confused, unsure, or totally unaware of his case. Most of the reports on his case were very unbiased and neutral. This all started with a verbal argument that turned physical with a woman that Angry Reactions was with in a hotel. It's currently not known how the woman knows angry reactions. All we know is that she did not need medical attention after this altercation. But since his entire brand was about love and positivity, even the exactly. slightest bit of uncertainty probably felt like a monsoon of hate. And I'm sure people in his DMs were very ruthless. The article said alleged domestic violence. It said I got arrested for alleged domestic violence. The woman needed no medical attention. It said uh, uh, a verbal altercation turned physical. Nowhere, anywhere did I say, did it say I put my hands on a woman. But after Wanye addressed it, an overwhelming wave of support came his way. And exactly two weeks after he addressed the allegations, he posted a TikTok of a black screen with text reading, not guilty, case dismissed. Along with that, he deleted every single video from his TikTok account. So the only thing left on his page was him addressing the allegations and saying his case was dismissed. One comment reads, y'all's apology better be louder than the hate. Another comment on YouTube reads, he's guilty, 1 million views. He's innocent, 200,000 views. Most of the time this is true. The hate, criticism, or allegations will go viral and do permanent damage to someone's career. But this was not really the case for angry reactions. This report of him being cleared of all charges has nearly 10 million views. This other TikTok received 5 million views saying, if I ever find that girl that falsely accused angry reactions of abuse and ruined his life, it's on site. With all the comments on these posts being overwhelmingly positive and supportive of Wanye. Applications like TMZ and Complex did not follow up and say the charges were dropped, which is unfortunately all too common in the news world. But when you search angry reactions arrested on TikTok, most of the videos you will see are either proclaiming his innocence or at least clarifying the whole situation. Despite this, Wanye thought the damage was done, and he decided to quit TikTok forever. My, my reputation is completely tarnished because you may know I'm innocent, 
But let's say 50 million people heard that I got arrested for putting my hands on a woman, right? I would say like 10 to 15 million people, if that heard that I was innocent. Do you understand? That means 35 to 40 million people still believe I put my hands on women. So in all honesty, bro, I just think this angry reaction, aggressive will never be the same after this. That was the that was the comedy in it. The fact that I was so mad and aggressive, but I'm saying nice stuff. But now when you see me, you're gonna think about this case, especially the people who still believe that I'm guilty. As far as the brands, these people not hitting me back. These not they not apologizing. They not saying, yo, let's let's get back to work. We just did this for our safety, the safety of our company. None of that is happening, bro. Everything I lost still remains. People ain't banging on my door to like work. Well, I'll say this, man. It, this whole situation, it, it just happened. Like you gotta get, you do have to give it time. I know we live in a popcorn popcorn culture where everything happens fast, but st business ha it takes longer. Let me let me change. <laughs> but uh, business like business stuff like that, it takes a while. Yeah. Also, you are gonna have to click. Like you got. I wouldn't say quit TikTok. I wouldn't say quit content create. Mm -hmm. I would say recycle, refresh, keep going, rebuild, yeah. rebrand. If people rock with you for who you are, they're gonna still rock with you for who you are. Right. And I always, and I also will say, unfortunately, not not saying because people can't can't understand it. This is not what I'm saying, but this is what I'm saying in the moment. Just because case dismissed doesn't mean innocent. Mm -hmm. That's that's the thing a lot of people fail to realize when they're young, and when they're they lack knowledge and, and true hard information. Wording is everything, especially coming from somebody who took a lot of legal classes. Wording is everything. Case dismissed doesn't mean innocent. There's a lot of people who are guilty who have had cases dismissed for lack of evidence. Not saying he's innocent, not saying he's guilty. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying facts are facts, but that's not my opinion about the situation. But my advice for him, don't give up. Don't also, when no matter what you do, do not rely on endorsements to for, uh, to always pay, pay your bills. Yeah. That is people putting money in your pocket for you to live. Since people are putting money in your pocket for you to live, they can come snatch their money out of your pocket any right. day and you are in this situation. It's, yeah. You should always depend on your own self. So with that being said, I like you do reactions, you should have been started a YouTube reaction channel. Yeah. You don't have to sit there and do but show more of your personality, how people really rock with you for who you are. Twitch stream, you built a platform, you built a likeness. Mm -hmm. You utilize that, you should have been utilized that for your own good instead of just relying on TikTok and endorsement deals. Yeah. Because then you're trying to use the Chico way out of it. But when those endorsement deals and, and those companies part ways like they have. As quick as they sign you on, is as quick as they'll drop you if anything occurred to. To disagree, especially to, yeah. Yeah, or. Or whatever it may be. Cause going, Whatever's negative. Because going forward from right now, honestly, it's always going to be hard for you to get another endorsement deal. Yeah. Because soon somebody's typing angry reactions, arrested, that article, those articles going to always pop up. Yeah. And especially with it being a part of being about DV, it makes it even worse. Mm -hmm. And DV is nothing society plays with, especially when it comes down to endorsements and corporations put money in your pocket to about their brand because somebody going to come out and say, hey, why are you have this guy? They don't care if you're innocent, it's innocent or guilty. Yeah. It's about the fact that you even got this allegation headline. This is, um, at one point, was attached to your name. It yeah. still is because you can look that information up and with the articles that haven't been cleared or haven't came back and be like, hey... Yeah, you know, but they're not. It, it, yeah. No, they're not. But I'm saying yeah. for the ones that have done it, it's still out there. So the people that don't know, yeah, they're going to look the stuff up and be like, oh, they're going to paint whatever picture they want of you now. Yeah. So regardless of you being positive, they can say whatever they want about you. And it, that that is what it is. 
Yeah. Sadly. My only advice is, man, just go out, grind, and, and and build your own name. Yeah. And put it put it on your own back and carry it yourself, man. Don't let don't ride no no other company ways. Do you? Yeah, I definitely want to quit, but I mean, I get it if it's I like it, overwhelming yeah. and stuff like that, and you don't want to be, be looked at in that light. I yeah. definitely get it. It's easier said than done. Facts, facts. Apologizing, they not saying, "Yo, let's let's get back to work." We just did this. For our safety, the safety of our company, none of that is happening, bro. Everything I lost still remains. People ain't banging on my door to, like, work with me. Everybody is keeping a distance because it's not about the fact that I'm innocent. It's not about that. Even though I was the victim, the fact that I got arrested and all of this is around my name, they don't want to work with me. This is a harsh reality that influencers and celebrities have to face. Your worst moments will be broadcasted and spread like wildfire, and your accomplishments will be whispered. Then again, it's also a reflection of what the audience wants to indulge in. Most people say they want to watch positive and uplifting content, but then find themselves only watching negative or content about people's downfalls. But the only way to combat that is to keep going. It's good that Wanye waited until the case played out to address everything and explain himself, but quick Quitting TikTok just allows the destructive media and the hate commenters to win. With him quitting and disappearing, now the story is, he was accused and he disappeared. Some could argue that makes him look more guilty. Now I can understand if his motivation to be on the internet in general was destroyed based on this controversy. But the best way to prove your innocence is to just keep pursuing your vision. Especially considering that he was one of the few popular creators whose entire brand revolves around positivity. And on top of that, erasing his whole whole TikTok and Instagram is him erasing his legacy. Now there is zero chance that his video showing his good intentions and positive influence could ever be shown in the algorithm. All his hard work has been undone and erased by himself. But this is not where the story ends. Because after the internet forgave him and seemingly moved forward, he continued to livestream on TikTok for hours discussing the situation with his fans, even addressing Sierra directly. We have a son. And what's crazy is, you're in the apartment that I'm paying for right now. You're in an apartment that I'm paying for right now. You have to see me. You're doing all of this internet stuff. You're talking about getting a restraining order on me. All of this started today because I was trying to talk some sense to you. I never got loud. I never got aggressive. I never got none of that today. You did. You did. All of this started because I was trying to talk to you. You have to see me. You're doing all of this for these in for the internet, but when you see me in real life, Sierra, it's only me and you, and we both know what it is. So what you gonna say to me then? Once the charges were dropped, I think we can all agree that that's where it should have ended, and this situation should have continued to be handled between Wanye and Sierra. But instead of moving on and quitting social media like he said he wanted to, he continued to speak publicly about what was going on. And it wasn't until after he brought this to the internet once again that Sierra finally decided to come out and share her side of the story. Hey everyone, um, I did not want to have to do this, but since Wanye wants to go on live, and spread a bunch of lies. Um, I I just want to come on here and say that he's lying. <laughs> um, if I wanted to press charges against him, I could have had him locked up for a while for him putting his hands on me. I have proof of him putting his hands on me multiple times. And he constantly wants to say that I put my hands on him first. There are times that I have because he screams in my face, like literally inches from my face, and I have to push him to get away from me. He has pushed me and put bruises on me while I was pregnant. He has put his hands around my throat to choke me. He has pulled out a gun recently on his birthday over FaceTime. He pulled out a gun and said he was on his way over here with a gun. And I have proof. I have a screen recording of that. I have proof of what happened with the police report. He was actually very scared of the police report getting out because he ripped the TV off the wall. He killed. Hold on. If it's a. I, with the police report, that should be public, especially even if the case is dismissed. 
So it's a case settled if it's dismissed. People should be able to still get their hands on a police report, right? It should be a uh, file. So if somebody truly wanted to get the police report, they could be able to subpoena the court to get the police reports if the case is, you know what I'm saying? Even if the case is dismissed, you, that's still a file. So we can all still see the police report. But a lot of people, if they've never like had to deal with that type of stuff or don't even have the knowledge of it, then they just think this this form, this paper form or whatever, mm -hmm. it's all it is. And not yeah. knowing that that stuff is still stored somewhere else. So. And like I, like I said previously before, just because the case is dismissed, unfortunately, it doesn't make make anyone innocent or not. Uh, it just means she probably went out there and said, hey, I don't want to press charges. Since she doesn't want to press charges, they dropped the charges, correct? Mm -hmm. So that that's how, in cases like this, that's how typically things are cases are dismissed. If she doesn't come forward and say, hey, I want to go through with the charges, then the case is dismissed and you can go online. I've seen it firsthand. You can go online and say, hey, I told you I was innocent. Ain't nothing happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen it. Firsthand. Times. Several times. I'm telling you. Not between us. No, never. No. Never. Uh -huh. But, uh, like, very seen it. You're scared of the police report getting out because he ripped the TV off the wall. He kicked me while I was holding our baby. And he smashed my phone, which is, like, the third phone that he smashed of mine. All of the comments on this post, which had 300,000 views, are showing support for Wanye. They are taking his side. Sierra then posted multiple pictures of bruises and scratches all over her body, as well as the TV being ripped off the wall and the phone smashed. And again, many of the comments are supporting Wanye. Sierra also posted a text message chain that read, I'm sorry, can I please take the car? You threw me across the apartment and tried to drag me out, so sorry for not being extra nice. And you completely broke my heart last night. I'm an emotional wreck right now. Wanye said, I told you to go in the hallway before I did anything. I guess the reason why she posted this text is by him saying before I did anything was her way of trying to prove that he admitted to putting hands on her. But we have absolutely zero way of knowing if this text chain is about the arrest, nor do we know if the bruises she posted were proof of Wanye attacking her. Sierra then posted a screen recording of a FaceTime conversation where the two are screaming at each other for multiple minutes. iPhone does not allow you to capture audio from a FaceTime call with the screen recording so there is no sound, but even without the sound you can feel the intensity of the argument. Sierra also claims that he was loading a gun and threatening her, but you can only see this alleged gun in the first few seconds of the video. Again, I must reiterate that Sierra posting this evidence was not viral news. It's not like the whole internet was suddenly back on Sierra's side and crucifying Wanye. But to him, it felt that way. So he decided to go on TikTok Live again in front of 5,000 viewers and address Sierra's claims. However, he broke down worse than ever. Hands on me, I never called a police on her. She's showing bruises of me defending myself from her and she making the internet think that I... <laughs> Bro, you know this, bro. You know this, bro. You know how you raised me, bro. You know how you raised me, bro. You know the bad part about the whole situation. And, and let me reiterate about the comments I said earlier, because I know it's going to be an ignorant son of a in the comments. Again, what I'm saying is I'm just stating facts. I'm not saying whether he's innocent or guilty. I'm just stating facts of how the law works. But the biggest thing I'll say is in this situation is you said she was deleting. You said she was walking away from everything. Walk away. Why continue to... to and, and like he, like Patrick said, you're not posting anything positive. Everything that you continue to post is regarding the DV case. Especially and, after... after. Go. Hey, go, baby. No, go. Especially after saying that you were done or you were yeah. quitting or you deleted everything. My thing is, if you're going to come back and walk away, and walk away, walk away. Well, I was about to say, if you're going to come back, then don't come back on this level. This should have just always be. You already addressed it. Always, this should have always been handled off. off. Off camera, Whatever, we shouldn't like, have never seen anything. Don't get on live, don't get on live, don't get on social, don't get doing none of that. Like now, especially for somebody, say for instance, like me, 
And yeah, yeah, y'all yeah. didn't really even know much even about the situation. Yeah. You got all you addressed it and like, okay, case dismissed, whether you're guilty, innocent, whatever. I don't but know. The case I wasn't is dismissed. there. Yeah. Like whatever happened, you know, whatever. But for me now to see all these other two videos or other video, this one, can't remember how many, like if you address still addressing a situation after people like, okay, we believe you or, mm -hmm. you know, you were cleared or whatever the case may be, whatever. And all I have now in my head is is this. All these other stuff. You know what stuff. I'm saying? Yeah. And like, we have, you have none of the positive stuff. All of that is gone. You deleted it. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, if you were going to come back, you could could have took a hiatus, you know, whatever. Took some time, got yourself together, mm -hmm. and came back even better, bigger and better. Facts. And that would have just been it. Just move on with your life. Y'all can raise y'all child. Y'all don't have to be together. And like, I'll and I'll say this: if he's going through, men men need to start understanding. Quit trying to be Mister Macho, man. Hey, if you're going through a DV as a man yourself, press them charges because she. Vice versa, you do it to her, she gonna press them charges. If you are, if he was going through any kind of DV situation with her, always put press them charges. Call the police. Press them charges, bro. Say, because hey, I haven't... The, because at the end of the day, you... If, if you that are is a victim the, if as that well. that is the case, don't know. But if that is the case... I'm saying, if, the if, yeah, yeah, if the tables are like that and you are being abused, you are a victim. Call the police. File a report. Press charges. Get do those, what you got to do. Again, get, get stuff documented as well. Get stuff documented. Y'all don't have to be together. You go your separation. She go hers. Y'all raise y'all child. Y'all don't have to stay in these toxic situations. And then a lot like, of I times... Know it's easier said than done of leaving. Yeah. You know, but... And then a lot of times, you, you stay in an apartment I, I pay for and all this stuff. Man, don't pay for it. But it's Take yourself off the lease. What you afraid she going to put you on child support? Let her put you on child support. Let the court say, hey... Because a lot of times I've seen in situations where a lot of celebrities say, hey, I'd rather pay, I'd rather give you this amount of money and you'd be giving her way more money than the court system going to tell you you have to give her. And mm -hmm. co-parent. And co -parent. Just co-parent. You take care of your child. She take... Y'all co-parent. Yeah. Like, learn... Uh, uh, yeah. Raise me, bro. You know how you raise me, bro. And I, bro, I just got through all of this drama. And she was on my side. She sitting there telling everybody, oh, I could have sent you to get, I could have sent you to jail if I press charges. And, brother, get I just want camera, you to, bro. I just, you know, and you know, I'm not this type of, you know this. You know this, bro. Everybody coming at me again, bro. Seeing the immense pain Wanye was going through made people believe that he was telling the truth. I stand with Wanye for real. I'm not gonna lie, as a man, you gotta remove yourself from the situation and just go to court for custody, bro. Some of y'all are slow. The case got dismissed and he was found not guilty. Sierra responded to Wanye. You are slow. You don't, you don't have to keep addressing uh, uh, it. No, right? I'm just, and most and of these people, the and let me say this. No, hold on, hold on, like I'm, I'm, I'm already talking, hold on, hold on. Most of these people in these comments are kids or people who are lack education, knowledge. For, when I say education, I mean further education, not just a high school diploma. Further education to educate themselves on law, real education on law, not speculation on what the law says, but educate yourself for real what the law says. Mm -hmm. Case dismissed doesn't, if he didn't go to court and a judge rule innocent, it's just a case dismissed. He, there's no ruling. But my bad, go. I just get tired of, tired of ignorance in the comments, man. This be too much of One Ye's live stream with even more videos telling her side of the story. When I say I put my hands on this man, I'm telling you, I only ever pushed him out of my face. He will get loud and aggressive and be spitting in my face. He, like, inches from my face. The only thing I've ever done to put my hands on him is to push him. And for people that have keep commenting on my pictures saying like oh it's self-inflicted and all these kind of things saying that i broke the tv and all this kind of stuff where's the proof of me attacking him and then i give you guys this proof and you're still gonna say i'm lying he started this by going live and talking shit about me and i felt like i needed to speak my truth 
It's been so long that I've been letting him lie just so he can save his reputation and his career, but he wants to do this for what? Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow it to keep going this far. I didn't want to press charges against him just because I, I just didn't, okay? Like, I, I've been with this man for almost two years. You know, I still have so much love for him. I didn't, I didn't want to like ruin his career or anything like that. All you people that are sitting here calling me liars and like saying that I'm making all this stuff up, this is exactly why women don't come out and say these things. They don't tell their truth because of people like you. I don't care about ruining his reputation or anything like that. That's not what I want to do. I want to speak my truth because he wants to go on live and talk about me and make me sound like I'm such a monster. I find it interesting that the reason they are both speaking out is because of how the public feels about their relationship. They're not talking about how they want to create a better environment for their child. They definitely sure. don't want the police involved, but they both want to protect their perception to millions of strangers online. So then one- Cause they're young. Because they're young. <laughs> and that's how society works right now. Kanye posts a video that he claims is proof that he is a victim. Since there is no visual and good, this though. is just audio, we only have Still limited information. Good. But it does seem like in this particular situation, Sierra put hands on him first. And even Still though most people showed me. support for Wanye in the comments once again, others had opposing opinions. Maybe he was the aggressor. Maybe the video is edited. It's not weird to consider an opposing viewpoint, especially during this serious of a situation. And the video is edited. You can see the audio cuts out entirely for a few frames and skips to the point where Sierra attacks him. Any video editor can confirm that this is what we call a jump cut. Because when you look at different parts of the audio, when there is silence in the conversation, you can still see a tiny fuzzy audio waveform because natural background noise is still being picked up. However, this sure. cut goes perfectly dead silent, which indicates something was removed from the conversation. And also, if you listen to it back and forth, you can kind of hear there's a little bit of a jump. But Wanye is very upset with anyone who doesn't believe him, even though the overwhelming majority of people do. Everything she's showing y'all and telling y'all is not true. So everybody keeps saying, oh, what about the, what about the pew pew, right? Since we can't say the G word on here, what about the pew pew? What is this? You want to know what that was? I can show you. That was this. Dude, don't you know look good, is? bro. This is a BB gun. This is not real. This is not a real. Still don't look good, bro. Like, not not justify either side. That still doesn't look good. Because if even even if it is a BB gun, and you're still making a threat using something, it still doesn't. You know. Cause man, let me finish this video. It's not real. These shoot BBs. I got this for Christmas in 2020. And the reason I was holding it like this while he's on FaceTime is because I was cleaning my apartment and this was sitting on the countertop. Now when y'all saw the bruises and stuff that she posted, y'all was all y'all was all attacking me. Oh no way, no way, I can't believe you did this. Then when I, I post the video of oh, literal proof that she's the aggressor that i'm the one who's being abused now you want to switch it up now i'm, I'm i got her to that point i'm gaslighting her i'm a manipulator i'm this i'm that my, career, going at the bottom. my reputation is going down the drain because of these false allegations and y'all keep 
Keep so the reason people keep entertaining this situation is likely because he keeps making live streams and videos giving everyone the fine details. How can two people post some of the deepest, most complicated, and graphic details about their relationship and then get mad at people on the internet for getting involved and asking true. questions? Y'all are the ones posting about it. Finally, the back and forth ended and he seemingly disappeared for a month. And while we were hoping that it's because the two were handling this off of the internet, Wanye claims something much worse happened. On Mother's Day, May 12th, 2024, Wanye posted on Instagram that Sierra took their child and ran off to California without his approval. If you weren't sure before, now we can all agree that this has gone too far. Wanye went on the No Jumper podcast to explain the story from start to finish, but the overarching message was that he just wants his son back. He wants to see his son, he doesn't even care about his reputation or his relationship. He just wants to be a father. I cannot believe Bro, I'm tired of you coming to the internet every time something is like going on, bro. Like you trying to get internet validation for what? Deal deal with this stuff off Yeah, honestly, his his career is just unfortunately done. Cause he's not doing anything to try to positively rebuild it. It's just uh, Honestly, that's another reason why I say fame shouldn't just happen overnight, man. She doing this to me because, like I said, you don't know me, bro. This girl, if anybody know, I don't deserve this. Shit. It's her, bro. It's her. She noticed. She know I'm not this type of man, bro. She noticed, and she doing this shit because she mad at me, bro. She ruining my fucking life, bro. Cause she mad. I miss my son, bro. Ice. Bro, I ain't seen my son in a month, cuz. I ain't seen my son in a month, bro. I miss that nigga every night, bro. She could leave, bro. She could leave. I don't need her, bro. How you gonna go to a across the fucking country with my son, bro? And don't even wanna, don't even wanna FaceTime me. Man. At the end of the day, domestic situations are extremely complicated. It definitely seems like these two are toxic together, and neither of them seem completely innocent. But even with all the stuff we have seen in this video, there is barely any real evidence to determine who is right and who is wrong. And we're not a jury, and they're not going to get the police involved, so we're never really going to know what actually happened. Airing out this entire situation on the internet was most definitely not smart. Sierra even admitted the whole reason why she escalated the situation in the first place was because he kept going on the internet and trashing her. Definitely doesn't justify her running away with the child. But every time either of them talked about their conflicts publicly, it just got worse. All we can do now is pray for the safety of the child and True. hope that they can come together and settle their differences Facts. privately. There have been some updates since recording this video. Wanye posted an Instagram story of him in a courtroom and a photo of him and his son saying, see you soon. A few days later, he posted a video of him and his son together, seemingly reconnected. Probably a visitation. Yeah. Uh, That's my only concern, honestly. It's, 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 it's just child. ugly, bro. My thing is, if I it just, y'all don't, y'all, y'all not right for each other. Y'all young, it's toxic. Everything is about the internet and the people and what they got to say, and yeah. th their validation, and that's never good. Like at the end of the day, y'all have a child involved. It'd be different if y'all didn't have this this child. Y'all can go y'all separate ways. Like, but y'all now y'all now have this child involved. And my only concern every time it's kids involved, that's all I'm focused on. Sure. Like it's the the safety of this child, the well being of this child. That's it. That's all. Like I agree. Obviously, y'all not together, so it's not to you know to that point where you like, oh, I can't leave because there are situations like that where it's hard to get out of. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But if you don't want your way, she don't want her way. Y'all don't have to communicate other than visitation for that child. Like, okay, you picking up your son, dropping him off, whatever the case may be. That's all the communication y'all need is about your child, and it shouldn't have to be nothing else. Stay off the internet. I'll, I can get, give two Fs of what so, somebody on the internet that I don't know think about me. But that's like, one thing I'll say about this generation. Uh, even some millennials, but typically yeah. with the Gen Z's generation and, and downward. 
the internet perception is way bigger than a lot. And I, I do think nowadays people are obsessed uh, with the internet perception more than what's, what's in reality. What's, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And my biggest thing with, uh, if I can give any advice with him, is to stay off the internet. Uh, off the internet. If you do care about rebuilding your brand, rebuilding... Um, it might be too late. Well, it's never but too. It's, ne- it's, it's, it's well. I ain't gonna say it's never too not, late, but sometimes it is too late. But I feel like I feel like in this case, since he cares, so, you know, seems like he cares so much about you know the internet yeah, 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 and what yeah. people think, and that's what you know everything is about. Like, oh, making sure that the people believe me and know that you know, you know, proclaiming your innocence or whatever the case may be. People on your side, so. It's not necessarily that it's too late or whatever the case may be, but you have to want to go back into that positive light and not worry about all the other stuff. Your son is safe. You get to see him. Hopefully, you, you know, she's mm-hmm. not being, you know, petty with not letting you see your son. And hopefully, you well, you're getting a course be, involved now. So you're going to, you're going to you're gonna so get you're that. You're going to get. Well, hopefully, hopefully, because, because I, I, I say this from looking at the evidence Patrick CC have, uh, Patrick pulled up. She has. It seems as though she has way more evidence than he has. It seems that way. From what I'm saying, from what the evidence show, I'm saying for the court system. Mm-hmm. The court system typically is very hard to prove uh, a mother's is unjust unless there's 100 percent evidence against her and none against you. It's very hard for a justice system to say, "Hey." We're going to remove a child from the custody of the parent because they look at the parent, the mother. I mean, has removed the child from the mother because yeah. they look at the mother as the nurturer, more more nurturing than the father in a lot of cases. But also, do uh, can we get some parents involved? Like some proper, some, some older, some type of older guidance to help out with this situation as well. Where y'all can be like, hey, we're going to co-parent, but I'm going to drop them off at your parents' house. You drop them off at my parents' house. I pick them up. You know what I'm saying? Like st- something like this. Where two, somebody would have... If y'all can't get along, a more so positive, have to, positive mindset I guess, can intervene. Being, you know, yeah. yeah. But again, with as far as like the... Like, you know, what's going on like between y'all... I, I don't know. I'm not yeah. there. It's your side. It's, it's her, her side. side yeah. And it's the, the absolute truth. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know her. I don't know your yeah. character. I don't know any of that stuff. So my only advice is just to go y'all separate ways. Yeah. Co-parent, go y'all separate ways. And, that's and keep it off the internet. And keep it off the internet. I know for a lot of people that's so hard to do. So hard to do. It ain't, it ain't really that hard to do. But... For so many people, it's so hard to do. <laughs> it it's not hard, but it's, for so many people, it's so hard to do because that's all that they know. That's yeah. all that they have. Sadly. Do none of that shit. Huh? I said, I don't do none of that. <laughs> yeah, but what, what keep it off the internet. Never raise, touch the internet. Raise y'all child. Make sure that y'all child has the best environment to grow and... Be the it's a boy, right? Yeah. Be the best that he could be. Y'all, y'all don't have to be together. Yeah. Cause it's too toxic. Yeah. Y'all yeah. spam us up, man. Let us know y'all thoughts about it for us in the comment section down below. Please but until next time, man. Y'all know how I go. I do go by the name DJ DK. This is. We are. We out. Dollar, 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 dollar. Let me watch out for my pop.